Welcome back, Dr. Tom is coming at you again, <clears throat> continuing our discussion, our fascinating discussion. Now, fetal, uh, fetuses do not breathe, guys. They're floating around in that amniotic fluid. They get their oxygen from the mother. So the right side of the heart doesn't have as much to do in a fetus as it does once the child is born. So there's a couple of uh, structures that help de deal with that. One is called the foramenal valley. Shunts blood from the right atrium to the left atrium. Why? Right? It doesn't need to go to the lungs because fetuses don't use their lungs. An inductus arteriosus between the pulmonary artery and the descending aorta. Same thing. To bypass, what we want to do is bypass the lungs until after birth, and that's a different story. Okay. Umbilical vein uh, transports oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. Here's an example where the vein is oxygenated. Ductus venosus bypasses the fetal liver to deliver blood to the IVC. Two umbilical arteries transport blood from the fetus to the placenta. Okay. Pulse points. There are certain areas in the body, guys, where you can, you can palpate or feel and detect a pulse. Temporal artery, facial artery, common carotid. This is a biggie. Anytime somebody is uh, like in an emergency situation or something, guys, or they've been injured, you want to get a pulse, you, you go with the carotid artery. You don't fool with the wrist. Brachial artery. However, now in medical practice, for, for normal uh, vital signs and stuff, the radial artery here at the wrist is what we take. You can also discern a pulse, the femoral artery here, the popliteal behind the knee, posterior tibial, and on top of the foot, the dorsal, dorsal pedis. Or dorsalis they're using the the latinized version of it here moving right along because we got two uh, two chapters in this five functions of blood vessels act as a delivery system regulate blood pressure engage in the exchange of nutrients and waste between capillaries and cells redistribute blood in response to changing body needs help re regulate body temperature the blood vessels deliver nutrients to the cell pick up waste Inadequate blood flow is known as ischemia, yeah, or also lack of sufficient oxygen. Five cool pieces says adequacy of blood flow. Uh, okay, pain, pulselessness, pallor, means, you know, light-colored, paresthesia, unusual sensations, paralysis, coolness. Uh, okay. Blood pressure, the force of blood against the vessel walls. The systolic pressure is the top number, guys. Like 120 over 80 is said to be normal blood pressure in the adult. 120 is the systolic pressure, the higher number. Uh, 80 is the diastolic. Remember systole and diastole and all that? Um, this is real important to know. The systolic pressure is the top number. The diastolic is the bottom number. If we subtract the bottom from the top, we have the pulse pressure. Okay, so like 120 over 80, the pulse pressure would be 40 millimeters of, what's HG? Dum, 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 dum. It's mercury. Why? I know, because it was known in ancient times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. How far it'll push mercury up that tube. Although nowadays, a lot of them don't have mercury. Normal range in the adults, 120 over 80, or less than 120 over, over 80. Consequences of being too high. Stroke, strain on the heart, other end organ dysfunction. Real hard on the on the kidneys too, guys. Consequences of hypotension, too low blood pressure. Inadequate perfusion, excuse me, blood flow to all organs, especially the heart and the brain. The diastolic, guys, is the most important. When this gets up to 90 or more, they start getting a little worried. If it gets over 100, they start getting a little more worried. Because this is the pressure on the heart and the vascular tree when it's at its most relaxed. All right, we measure it with a blood pressure cuff. The official name of a blood pressure cuff is a sphygmomanometer. Is that what you'd like to call it from now on? Well, outlawed. You cannot call it a blood pressure cuff. You have to call it a sphygmomanometer. No, I'm only teasing. Um, and you also have to use a, use a stethoscope too, guys. You put the cuff around there and you watch the gauge. And you pump it up to what you think is high enough. And you start letting it out Psst, a little at a time. And you're listening. And when you first hear the beat, that's the di the systolic. And then when you keep hearing it, you keep hearing it. And when it stops, 
you've reached the diastolic. Take some skill to use that. Okay, now look at how the uh, the blood pressure falls off. And the aorta is sky high. It's the highest. It's, and then it goes out through the other arteries and gets to the arterioles. And the capillaries has fallen way down. And then when it comes back through the venous circulation, it's very, very low. But that's good. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, now the heart pumps blood out. Muscle contraction, respiratory movement and all, is what brings the, the blood back to the heart. Veins have valves in them. The reason is, guys, is remember muscular contraction is what milks that, makes that blood go back up. If you didn't have these valves, when you were contracting the muscles in your legs, it would squish the blood up here. As soon as it relaxed, it would go whoosh all the way back down to the foot. With the valve, it'll only go down oh, to the next valve. And it's like climbing a ladder, and work its way up. When these valves get blown out, it's called a varicose vein. I'm sure you're all familiar with that or heard of it. Arteries don't have veins, uh, veins, valves, but veins do. Heart and blood vessels determine blood pressure. Or, yeah, remember all this about cardiac output and all. I don't want to go over it again because we're time is a wasting here. Um, remember, guys, that blood vessels, particularly arteries, are not just tubes in the body. They're not like pipes in your house. These things can dilate and constrict, and they can change the permeability of them to let stuff in and out of their walls. Very amazing. So the the more resistance to flow there is, the higher the blood pressure. Arteries can do the same things. Here it is vasodilated. Here it is vasoconstricted. Why? Because it has an... The tunica media has a smooth muscle in it. <clears throat> Mechanism of blood pressure regulation, rap, rapid elective baroreceptors, uh, these detect blood pressure. There are receptors in the aortic arch and in the carotid sinuses up here. Sensory nerves, the cranial nerve 9 and 10. The medulla plays a big role in the brainstem, motor nerves. Obviously, guys, blood pressure has to be maintained in a very... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, very. When it gets down like six, 90 over 60, then it's getting too low. Barrel receptors, you know, we said that. We said all that. And then it triggers a reflex and starts. Here's the, uh, uh, at the carotid sinus, the barrel reflex, barrel receptor. Barrel receptor reflex, let's see, stimulus is low blood pressure, activates receptors, sensory information runs along cranial nerve 9 and 10. The medulla interprets it, fires off sympathetic innervation to bring it back up again. Slower acting mechanism is uh, our hormones, and that's the case in general. Renin angiotensin aldosterone, renin angiotensin system is in the kidneys. Yes, the kidneys have a big stake in blood pressure because the higher the blood pressure is, the, the more uh, glomerular filtration, the higher the glomerular filtration rate of the kidney. So the, the kidney needs to be able to control it, and it does. Remember aldosterone and, um, manages salt and stuff. It's in the uh, uh, adrenal cortex. Antidiuretic hormone for the posterior pituitary. Uh, uh, helps adjust how much water we're getting rid of. These two, eh, just be familiar with them. Blood vessels act as vessel exchanges, yeah. Um, again, guys, because the capillaries, all the work, or nearly all, takes place in the capillary beds. And they're only a single cell thick, and it allows substances to, to move out, in and out by simple diffusion, which is a passive process, thankfully. Capillary, good exchange vessels? Yes, indeed they are. Thin capillary walls, millions of capillaries, place a capillary near each cell. Slow velocity of blood flow. Yeah, by the time it gets to the capillaries, guys, it's very, very, uh, very low blood pressure. Exchange involving filtration or osmosis. Um, yeah, for the time being, we'll say the kidneys. The kidneys have a very extensive, extraordinarily complex filtration system. When we study the re uh, renal physiology, we'll talk about that. Capillary exchange. Outward force is filtration. Caused by blood pressure, aided by diffusion. Inward force is called oncotic pressure. Caused by plasma proteins and lymphatic drainage. Um, 
plasma proteins, guys, cause because it, uh, there's a higher concentration of them in the blood and not out here, it makes fluid go into it. Remember our how we studied all that in chemistry and all city. See, we're coming back to it now. <laughs> Mechanisms of edema formation. Edema is swelling, guys. Edema is swelling. Important word to know. The forces that determine the movement of water across the capillary beds are disrupted in many clinical conditions like heart failure. Severe burns, kidney disease, blocked lymphatic drainage. So you can start swelling up, and it can be a real problem. Mechanisms, edema and dehydration. Edema, fluid uh, floods the interstitial spaces, the spaces inside the body. Pressure of outward filtration exceeds inward oncotic pressure, which makes us swell up more. We're not drawing as much into the blood vessels. Okay. Dependent edema, pitting edema, when you press, especially to ankles, you press and the indention stays a long time before it finally wing comes back out. Dehydration, fluid of interstitial space is depleted. Inward octotic pressure exceeds pressure of outward filtration. Poor skin, turgor, tenting. You can take and pull on it, wing, and it, it stays up for an extended period of time before it finally... Ooh. Edema formation, excess blood volume, see mechanism, excess blood volume increases filtration pressure in capillaries. Excess fluid accumulates in interstitial spaces out throughout the body. Example, heart failure, overhydration, drinking too much. Yes, guys, there are people that drink too much water. Why? Because it's all trendy and hip, and people walk, or they, they won't cross to the mailbox without their little bottle of water. You should have been an army like me. I went two days in hot weather without, out in the field without water. I thought I was going to die. Finally crossed a muddy river and we got water. It was the most delicious, muddy, filthiest water I ever had. It was great. Dema formation, loss of albumin. Albumin is the common plasma protein. Let's say loss increases. It decreases on tight pressure by not having enough things dissolved in it. Fluid accumulates in interstitial spaces. Examples, nephrotic syndrome. Albuminuria, you're losing albumin in the urine because of this kidney problem. Hypoalbuminemia, not enough in the blood. Blocked lymphatic drainage. Um, unfortunately, guys, a lot of ladies who've had breast cancer and had to have a mastectomy, they often take out the lymph nodes on that side because the cancer is often spread to that too. And when it does that, it messes up the lymphatic drainage. Mechanism. I remember there's an entire lymphatic system that's just as big as the circulatory system. It has a clear, watery lymph fluid. It's sort of like what's in a blister. Lymphatic capillaries help drain interstitial space. When blocked or removed, fluid accumulates. Oh, right here they're saying lymphedema removal of axillary lymph nodes okay most commonly in uh, mastectomy edema formation poor lymphatic mechanism lymphatic capillaries help drain interstitial spaces when blocked or removed fluid accumulates example here the same one we said oftentimes breast cancer spreads through the lymphatic system many cancers do and it'll end up trapped by the lymph nodes and they have to take them out too when they do it really messes up the the drainage Cause of dehydration, low blood volume caused by low filtration pressure in the capillaries. Plasma on oncotic pressure pulls fluid from the interstitial spaces. Examples, excess vomiting, diarrhea, exercise, and high, that's yeah, all it says. Excessive vomiting or diarrhea, guys, can be quite serious. Distribution of blood flow at rest and exercise. Um, during rest, you can see it's kind of spaced out but exercise look the skeletal muscles hogging up 71 percent of it just like you would think why it, it, the muscle demands that oxygen man blood vessels regulate body temperature indeed they do they spread a lot of heat during exercise blood vessels dissipate heat by heat by vasodilation during cold weather blood vessels conserve heat by vasoconstriction We made it. All right, guys. Uh, excuse me. I was just scratching my nose. <laughs> um, guys, if you get a chance, go to uh, to uh, YouTube and subscribe to my channel and like these videos if you would. Uh, if you're interested in my book, The Force is With Us, you can get it at, uh, on Amazon. It's about $15. Okay, we're about out of time. This finishes two. we got two more to go for this week. Dr. Tom signing off. Uh,